Jennifer is an actress, and I think it's so amazing that she decided to have the courage to step onto her calling and be a director. So tell me, first of all, what her choices is about and then why you chose to direct it. He literally texted this to me and he's like, I believe that you are the only one who can direct this story. And I'm like, he's right. Because deep, deep inside, I wanted to. But I was afraid to be like, and on top of it, I'm going to direct it, right? Because everybody, <laughs> all I'm hearing is we need a name director. We need a name actor. We need a name Purdue. We need a name. <laughs> we need a name. <laughs> this is what I'm rooting for. You know, that's why I also created Little Studio Films. And obviously my podcast is to champion exactly this type of people. She slayed as a director. Her performance on her own mom is off the charts. And they walk the walk and talk the talk. Welcome to the heart of show business. I am your host, Alexia Melocchi. I believe in great storytelling and that every successful artist has a deep desire to express something from the heart to create a ripple effect in our society. Here we go, people. Buenos dias. I'm going to speak Spanish a little bit on this very special episode of the Heart of Show Business. We're going to be on YouTube on this one, and we're also going to be on your favorite podcast player because you've got to see the lovely faces of these two amazing people that I got to meet, Mauricio Mendoza and Jennifer Behrens from True Form Films. They are a hot indie film production company uh, focusing on Latin centric con content, but also inspirational stories. And, and of course, what we're here to talk about, because that's what we're here for, we're here to do some fundraising. I'm going to tell you straight up, people, but we're also going to give you some inspiration and great behind the scenes stories on what it's like to be an indie producer. So we're going to be talking about this amazing couple, husband and wife, their production company, and the latest effort of the lovely and talented Yennefer. By the way, they're both actors, so they'll tell you a little bit about themselves, but it's a movie called Her Choices, which I am proud to be a co-producer on and been supporting it on its journey and hopefully selling the heck out of it when it's finished. Yes. So welcome to my show. Jennifer and Mauricio. Yes. Hi, Alexia. Thank you so much for having us. Um, first, I just want to thank you for showing up for another woman, for being so passionate and always open hearted. And since the day I met you on Clubhouse, yes. I just heard your voice and I'm like, that woman, I need to meet her. And that was in 2020. So here we are four years later and you have been on my journey to tell, help me tell my story. And for that, I am so grateful. So uh, I am so honored to be with the two of you. And, you know, I, for anybody who doesn't know, you know, Jennifer has such passion to tell her story and it, it is, it is a true story and she'll tell us about why she decided to do it. But I think, it is so important to champion female storyteller and God bless her for having such an awesome husband. We're going to have to clone him for myself and for a lot of other women, I think, <laughs> who want Mauricio in their life. But, you know, he's like a real man's man, you know, because men's men are the ones who actually are there to support and uplift women. And we have all have to talk about the elephant in the room, of course, about the Oscars that are coming up any day now by the time this podcast drops. And the big shout out of somebody like Greta Gerwig, who, hello, just directed a movie that made the most money ever for a woman and also in general created a cult movement as if like movies direct themselves, right? And, you know, Jennifer is an actress. And I think it's so amazing that she decided to have the courage to step onto her uh, calling and be a director. So tell me, Jennifer, first of all, what her choices is about so that we can, my listeners can know why you chose to tell the story, her okay. choice, no pun intended, <laughs> and then why you chose to direct it. It's a two for, it's a two for one question. It <laughs> is. Um. Well, it's definitely been in my heart um, for over 20 years uh, to share my story because um, I think it's important to 
to be able to liberate yourself from shame and from, you know, family secrets and, and childhood traumas that we all have in our deep in our hearts and not even knowing that that is that those things that happen in your young life stop you, give you a, like almost like this like cage where you put yourself in and you are you don't allow yourself to 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 really break through all those limitations so not to get so too 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 spiritual and too you know philosophical about it it's basically about an 18 year old girl that wins miss teen miami is ready to um you know go for her dreams of becoming a working actor and her dream is to help her family um break that poverty cycle and break from from having to make bad choices in to survive to make money right which is the um the 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 drug trafficking in nine in the 80s in miami right i am a, a daughter of immigrants um and they didn't have their legal status here so it was difficult for them to find um, work, work that that would actually sustain a family the way they wanted, right? And they were also very enamored with the '80s, the Miami Vice, you know, lifestyle, the the Griseldas of the world and stuff, right? However, they always, my parents always protected us and sheltered us from that world. It was a double life that they were living. So here's an 18 year old going to private school, living her best life saying I am going to be the one who who breaks this this bad spell. And um, a week after winning Miss Teen Miami, and her parents get incarcerated and she's left alone with her brother and sister. Her brother is 12 years old. Her sister is 10 months old. So she becomes Miss Teen Mom um, a week after winning Miss Teen Miami. And looking back, like I share in my why video, which you can definitely put the... Um, you know, the link to the Seed and Spark, you guys will get to see my why video, why I'm telling my story is I was crowned Miss Teen Miami to take care of my family because that's what queens do. Queens take care of everyone, right? And they, they actually sacrifice their freedom to do whatever it is they want to take care of everyone and make sure that everyone is safe, right? Watching the crown really gave me that um deeper understanding of my story because when i when as we watched the crown it was like wow you can see that inner conflict that she has that she you know gave up her free life with her family and her husband to become queen of a nation wow you know so um it's a coming of age story that um that helps you understand that you have the power to make good choices in your life. And so I, I, I concentrated on the relationship between my mom and I, um, you know, two women, two very strong, beautiful, badass women with, with huge hearts. Cause my mom, you know, to this day, she's been, she's always been very supportive and she's always done everything for us. Um, and she came from, uh, from, a. um, uh, limited limited resources and for her she she didn't have other options she didn't see the other options back in the day right so she chose the wrong men she chose the wrong <laughs> career and she just chose the wrong business right and the consequences of that um so what my story is about the aftermath of what happens to the families the children of of parents that choose this life the Griselda life, the Scarface life, that kind, the narcos life. What happens to these innocent bystanders, right? Collater the collateral damage. And that's what my story is about, the flip side, not so much the business side, but the flip side. I love what you just said, because one of the things that I, I enjoyed Griselda and, and I thought Sofia Vergara was amazing in that role. But, and it's interesting because, you know, you feel for her because she had to do the things that she had to do to survive. But right. one of the things that I see the difference in your story, which makes it so compelling, is you're not focusing so much on 
the stories about the drug dealing and surviving as a woman, because if you look even at Griselda, the, the, the effects, the collateral damage of her sons, right? Yeah. You know, having seen that. And then we're seeing that about your character, which is obviously you, um, as making something out of herself, surviving in spite of making certain choices in order to ensure the safety and the future for her little brother and little sister, you know, and and the end product of that is you and your amazing husband standing in front of me right now, having had your prolific career as actors, both of you. Um, I know you also teach actors on how to slay auditions and all of that, and you go know, through your own journeys and having a company that has produced quite a few films that got distributed, which granted they were different in style than this one. But I think we live in a time where storytelling is so important and, and inspiration is so important. And so I know that you had quite a struggle, uh, we're not going to lie, trying to raise the money for this because it's not your narco type of film. It's not your horror film. How did the two of you as a team, as, as owners of this indie production company, make that choice knowing that it was not going to be an easy road? to get the money for this. What was the magic thing that got those first investors, and I met a few of them, God bless them for having been on the road with you, that they wanted to say, I'm gonna support you. This is a story you must tell. Yes, um, before, I, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely defer that to my- Let uh, the producer talk as well. <laughs> so speak, but I did not answer why I'm directing the story. So oh, that's just in a short, short answer is I was actually reaching out to other directors to to direct it. And it wasn't until my um, my friend Diego Velasco, um, Velasco Velasquez, I, I always um, he's an amazing Venezuelan director of um, Ground Zero, the um, La Hora Cero, Hora Cero um, movie. He said, Jenny, I am I'm so busy. I can't. And this is your story. Nobody's going to direct it or tell it better than you. You can do this. Like he literally texted this to me and he's like, I believe that you are the only one who can direct this story. And I'm like, he's right. Because deep, deep inside, I wanted to, but I was afraid to be like, and on top of it, I'm going to direct it, right? Because all, everybody, all I'm hearing is we need a name director. We need a name actor. We need a name Purdue. We need a name. We need a name. <laughs> I'm like, we I'm are names. names. We don't need no names. I got a name. My name is Jennifer Barons, Jennifer Barons, Jenny, Yen, Jenny from Miami, Jenny from the block, whatever. I have a name. This is me. Yeah, plus, yeah. plus, you know, <laughs> part of what we talk about with our students, right? It's green lighting yourself. If we yes. don't give ourselves the opportunities, who is going to? And the only way that that opportunities are created is when people see it. If they don't see it, we're just talking about it. So for us, that's how we started 12 years ago making films. We were just two actors. You know, she had come off from General Hospital. I had... When we met, I was doing a series that was on Showtime that lasted three years, and we both were unemployed, trying to figure out the next step, right? Right, And realizing how much not in control of our lives we were because we were actors waiting for that call or that, that next, next audition. Mm -hmm. And we both had felt, we both felt that we had gotten to a point where like, oh, we've, we're here, we've arrived. And all of a sudden we realized, the offers are going to come in. Oh, my agents would come in. I go, oh, I have to pre-read again. What? <laughs> so literally is that it's when she said it to me, I thought, you know what? Yes, you direct this. Absolutely. Because I'm going to also be there. So when you're on 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 camera, I can also be there as, as eyes. your eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I don't know what I'm doing. So right. we both know what we're doing. Let's just. Let's just do just it. Just really believe. And if we're going to tell our, our students, green light yourself, then we got to walk do the it. talk. Do it. Walk 100%. the walk or walk, walk, walk the talk. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how it happened. And I'm really uh, extremely, extre not just proud of her. I'm extremely proud of her because watching her 
go from acting and then jumping to directing and then producing, it's not an easy thing to do. And sometimes people forget, right, when they're not in it, what it takes to just make a film, just to make a film. But she is wearing every hat to make this thing happen. And she pulls it off like a, like a champ, like a champ, because her passion is to really make a difference. That yeah. truly is her passion. This ain't an ego um, project. For us, we don't, we don't, we actually check each other's ego at the door. <laughs> this is not an ego thing for us. We really truly want to make a difference out there for for humanity, for producers, for uh, minority uh, performers that for aspiring we, actors and we films. have been able to do this because we believe in ourselves. Because we believe in ourselves. We have had every every obstacle humanly possible put in front of us, not only as actors, but as directors, as producers. <laughs> and I we're so blessed that we can work, yeah. we can be on this ride together and and you know, going on this journey, these ups and downs of 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 this. And that's how we started producing. So going back to True Form Films, it's literally we were I met Jennifer on a movie. I was already producing, um, you know, shorts. I was doing web series, music videos. Jennifer was also producing. So when we met, one of the things that connected us right away was creating, creating Latin content that it's not necessarily about putting Latinos is we want to be able to make stories that just tell our stories from the the uh, Latin Universal, American, um, you know, you know that that just happens mess. to have Latinos in it. It's not like we're pushing a Latino agenda. We just want to be representing our stories out there that that exist. It's a human experience. And so um, Jen and I, we took a business so a seminar called a Passion to Profit. Mm -hmm. And we really walked away saying we can do our first film. Let's do this. Let's keep pushing true form films and the mission of creating, making a difference one film at a time. Um, and after school was born. And, you know, people and really truly is how did we do it? We just did it. <laughs> we just said we with were going to do it. With our community, with filmmakers that wanted to join forces, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's it's um, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful to see the village come together because it takes a village. Yeah. And and truly, you know, I had a company called Mendoza Entertainment. That's that's what I had when I met her. And when I met Jen, she had True Form Films. She had already established this in 2006. Six. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we both were thinking of a company. OK, well, we're going to have to drop our both of our companies. And she goes, oh, hell no. oh I'm <laughs> dropping True Form Films. <laughs> And then, like a queen. then she told me how the name came about. And I'm like, oh, no, then, yeah, that you, you win. <laughs> and uh, and we've we've just been building, you know, we have 12 films done uh, that we've been able to produce. Um, and um, we feel that and we've been able to accomplish something that makes us very happy and very proud and also um it help it makes me feel great and i know for for mao as well that we've helped our um colleagues as well make their films yeah. to believe their dreams come true to, like to believe like alex de hoyos like yvonne cole like um carlos carrasco you know we've they've trusted us enough to produce their their films and it's been definitely a labor of love um for all of it um for all of us and um because i mean part of it was that beautiful. when people were coming to us and they saw our first film they go you, you know people this? were saying why are you sharing your budget you shouldn't share your budget we wouldn't share it now but at that moment we felt like we, we needed to well yeah we were we were just starting we were just, out so but, we we're like you know but, as but filmmakers we, as filmmakers i, I thought if we start sharing how much we did it for, then people will go, oh, I can do this. Oh, yeah. I can see it. Oh, there's a possibility. 
So that sort of kind of became our, our niche for a while, the yeah. micro the budget micro low budget. making, mm -hmm. and people would come to us right. and we would look at their budgets and we would show them how they could make it. And then they would go, well, we can't do this without you. So then they would hire us and it sort of became the thing. Our niche, right. Saying that we kind of lost. We put our, our stuff, stuff in the aside. background in, our, in the back burner. And so, but it was perfect. Why? Because we were getting ready training and getting trained and prepared for her choices which is you know circling back to to her choices it is our biggest baby it is our highest budget and it is a for us piece. it's a period piece and it's for us our um our vehicle to get to the next level that is our goal and okay. so going back to your your second question which you know it's about the financing how did we you know um how did we get the financing and also what happened and why are we fundraising right now? Um, so I'll tell you my, my cliff note is basically three years ago, we started a, a developmental um, crowdfund <laughs> and then we did. And that's when I believe that's when you and I really solidified our relationship and our team started showing up, our village started showing up. And in that village, came our very first amazing incredible um, investor. And, you know, he's our private investor. I will keep his name um, private, but it's, it's just one of those angels that we believed was going to show up. We didn't know how, but he did and his beautiful wife and his family. And, and we've become family because we've mentored their children who want to be uh, the, want to be in the business as well. And so it's become a, a win-win, right? Um, and it's their first project as well, um, as far as um, executive producing and um, and they're just as real as real gets. It's yeah. just been the biggest blessing of, of our lives as filmmakers, yeah. like that, the dream, the dream um, angel investor. Yeah, truly there are no words to explain no, no, the experience no that we've had yeah. um, with them, with both of them. Um, and uh, it's been one of the things that make you really truly believe that there are really Good. solid human beings, solid men out there, because I will speak for the man's race. Uh, there are Yes. There are few in between. And he is uh, a family man, a man of his man, word. A man, integrity. I mean, an incredible dad, like a wonderful friend. Yeah. Like, yeah. So there but are you know amazing, what? beautiful beings out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? And, and, and this is for the listeners out there. You know, first of all, I need to comment on the vision that these two had because not going to lie, even when I signed on and they said, you know what, we're going to do this and we're going to spend this type of money and it's going to look like a five million. I'm like, I don't know about that. Let's see what it will really do. But boy, did they deliver. I mean, when they sent me the trailer, I was blown away. I was like, what just happened here? I mean, these two, they really shot a studio level type of film with the shoestring budget now i i not get it because when they were telling me their budget i was like guys you know you, you can do so much more you can do this you can put money on the talent and then i'm like screw the talent because honestly every actor in there is stellar and i'm so glad that they gave opportunity to the ones that are not the obvious talent she slayed as a director. Her performance on her own mom is off the charts. And they went behind, they they like walk the walk and talk the talk. And, and you know what? Why be a salesperson? Because as an actor, you are a salesperson in somebody else's movie. You're selling someone else's movie by your performance. So why not be the salesperson for your own dream, which is why I'm asking everyone to check out the website that I'm going to put on the show notes and, and rally up to support them to the finish line. Because for those of you who don't know, when you make smaller films, you don't get bonded. You can't afford to get bonded. And so when shit happens, like crazy weather, hello, climate change, and you lose a week of filming, 
that's what happened on this movie, which is why they're also fundraising is there are like little things that happen that we're not accounted for just because it's life. And, but they deserve to have people get behind them and help them finish this. And I know I'm going to sell the heck out of it because I believe in it. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, please support them, you know, go check it out. Because as we talked about this, you know, and I love what you said about, by the way, the Latin voices and not making it a Latino film. Oh, what? No, you're just Latino filmmakers, period. You don't have to be showing the obvious things. I loved American fiction. I don't know if you saw it, but one of the, the purposes of American fiction, are you right. going to see? You saw it, right? Oh, I'm not going to say anything. Oh my God, you have to see this because this is exactly the director was a first time director. He had never directed in his life, but he wanted to tell a story that is not going to put black people as with the stereotypes. And this is exactly what you did. You tried to break stereotypes. And so, you know, Jennifer, you were an amazing actress and Mauricio, you were a fantastic producer. Um, and of course, incredible director and everybody coming together. And this is really what independent filmmaking is all about. So, you know, I know that, by the way, in closing this little, because we, we're we going to have more of this as probably we're going to do another episode when, God willing, the film is shot very soon. And then we can talk about the journey. Um, I know you had a dark moment, uh, both of you, when somebody who had promised we're not going to name names again but promised the funding and then they did not deliver um and you know the dark night of the soul as they say in screenwriting all is lost yep and mindset has a lot to do with how you got yourself out of it so tell me both of you how did you get yourself out of that dark place okay um i'll start and then you can close it um yes so the dream was to raise all the, the the funding and we did it with two investors. One of them, um, once we got to Miami, uh, about four days later, pulled out. It was, that night was almost for me, like when I found out that my parents were in jail after winning Miss Team Miami. I was so in the high, like my dream is coming true. I'm gonna go and tell my story. I'm back at, I'm back home telling my story as a director. It's full circle moment for me. This is like incredible. And then the rug was pulled from it happened in Miami and it happened in Miami again. And I was like, whoa, I mean, all of those feelings that I had as an 18 year old came back rushing in. The only difference Alexia was that my mindset and the 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 experience as a as a woman now what I made it mean now was I have an opportunity to relive that and really truly heal that moment because I'm making it mean that I am unstoppable I'm making it mean that God is protecting me rejection is protection and there's a better way And I was giving up my baby, basically. I was like gonna sign off on the copyright. And we, as True Farm Films, were not gonna have full creative control or any of that. It was basically here, have our baby. I'm here, I'm having my baby. And now it's it's all in your hands. And God has another plan. And that's not truly what I wanted. So, So I feel that, All of these obstacles to tell my story are so parallel to what I went through as an 18 year old that it's giving me the opportunity to relive it, but respond to it in a different way, in a more empowering way and no, and not making it mean because at 18 years old, what I made it mean was that I wasn't important, that I didn't deserve my dreams, that I wasn't worthy, that I, I didn't matter and that I was not lovable. All of these things that I, as as a young woman, made all of that mean. I was abandoned. I was all of these things. And now, as a as a as a as a fifty two year old woman that looks twenty, 
Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> is now saying, guess what, Jen? No, you were always worthy. You were always enough. You were always important. And this was a gift. This is a gift for you to tell your story so that you can help others liberate themselves from their own, you know, incarceration of not feeling enough, of not feeling worthy. And so this is why this happened. So I thank that person in retrospect for giving me that opportunity to stand up strong and go, you know what? You're not going to stop me. You know what? I'm going to tell my story in my terms. And you know what? We're not going back to LA without making a movie. We still have our amazing first investor. How much do we have? We need to now, babe, we need to stop and see the schedule. And we're going to shoot the first act and we're going to get a, a, a badass trailer, a badass trailer, a badass first act, which will also serve as a pilot, as a presentation to get the rest of the funding and get the right team and the right people on, uh, on, on our, on our team. And that's what we did, Alexia. That's what we did. And it took us another two weeks. It was so hard. I cried so much, but I knew that it was the right, it was the right way. It was like, I was able to call the shots. I was able to be truly the boss, the creator, the, the, the creator and the, and the, and the boss of my own story. So it's really knowing your worth and knowing that your story matters and what's in your heart is precious and not allowing the outside world and their opinions to stop you or to belittle you because we all go through it. I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. And so it's about standing strong. It's about standing strong and, and being unstoppable and continuing on and pivoting. Like Tony Robbins says, pivot, yeah. you got to pivot. And you got to have a hundred different ways, a, a, a thousand different ways to do what it is you want to do. You keep going until you're done. You keep going until it's done, until you make it happen. And that's what we're doing. And with human beings like you and like our investor uh, and our team. Attachment to <laughs> I mean, our yeah. team is just, that is, that is um, yeah, uh, the uh, blessing. Uh, ultimately, we know with you, with, with Pagemont, with, with the different people that we have on the team. Uh, I, I have to say, Miguel, uh, Miguel you know, I yeah. don't want to keep them out of this, yeah. the name, um, that it really takes a, a team and a village to, we couldn't have done this alone. We, we truly had, uh, couldn't. Right. And the, the, the crew, mm -hmm. our DP, uh, that we had our, 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 uh, line producer, Dwayne, uh, Julio Saldarriaga, who was one of our great friends. So, Ed Arena. I mean, you yeah, know, just, again, we're going to start naming every, it's our uh, whole team, team because and, and we don't want to leave anybody out. We people love wonder, you all. You know, if you're we wondering why you I, I love and, and and admire Jennifer, I mean, you just you just heard it. Um, we, I, listen, that moment, I felt that I had failed her, <laughs> right? Because oh. I brought this investor in and, I, I told her I need to go for a walk. I literally went for a walk down the street in Miami. I've I'd never been there. It was and like 1130. It, at I night. was on the phone That's figuring out, crying. calling people that I know. And I go, please yeah, somehow <laughs> come in with me and figure out a way because I felt like I had just failed her. We had two different things going on, two different feelings. And then when I got back in the car and we both looked at each other, we said, I said no, this, is what we're this is what she said, this is what we're doing. Uh, and I'm like, OK. And then I said, OK, what do we have now called Dwayne? I was not the original line producer on this. It was the company's the line, other. the other company. I've always line produced our movies. So luckily I have the gift of yeah. line producing. I already knew it. <laughs> so I went back with Dwayne. We sat down for a day and a half, looked through all the numbers. Came up with the days that we we could shoot the the important the days because we, we felt we at that moment that we had to shoot the most expensive looking part of the productions as well because that is the eye candy for people 
and specifically also, you know, it's a coming of age story. And as you as as you well know, uh, you know, when the it's opening. the opening, it's it's the high intensity adrenaline. Uh, and uh, we went and did it and we are so happy. It was so hard. But when you <laughs> so see hard. It, I, but I, when you see it, you just go, oh, my God, we did it. Right. I like that. Right. That wasn't enough. <laughs> that wasn't enough for for the universe to, like, make me like get stronger it's like okay now you're push the production you're going to start april 10th that week but now we're going to send you the most torrential rain in history in miami and fort lauderdale so dale let me see show me what you got jennifer barons <laughs> well jennifer and mauricio you certainly show the universe what you got and you know as we always say think from the end I mean, this lady showed up on the Tony Robbins Zoom. She was picked out of, I don't know, 400,000 attendees. And she's holding her awards and she's ready to give the speech. So this is what I'm rooting for. And, you know, that's why I also created Little Studio Films. And, and obviously my podcast is to champion exactly this type of people. Can I have all the biggest stars in Hollywood on my show? Yes, I can. Can I have some of the biggest stars in my movies? Yes, I can. I can access them. But what really makes me happy is to see people like this. And so when you're wrapping up this podcast and you're checking the trailer and you're going on the website and you're going on the seat and spark a don't just do the 22 dollar thing where you just get my book because you know what yes that's great thank you very much i i am also giving my book as a bonus because i want people to also learn exactly what those two just did on their own and i'm putting some cliff notes of that but you know what a dinner in la or anywhere in a big city for two it's like 200 bucks so can you skip a dinner and maybe give 200, 300, 500? Maybe you give more because you get to have your name on the credits and you get to come to the premiere, meet all of us and learn about this journey. Yes, you can. So please, I mean, help this amazing team for the Latinos, for the underrepresented, for women directors, for indie producers, for creatives, you know, it's not just one cause, it's many causes. So I'm going to get off the soapbox and I'm going to just have those two give you some last words as to why they need your support before we close it. Because <laughs> it wasn't meant to sell or fundraise, but we have to. This is our business. We are salespeople. We're yeah. artists and artists are salespeople, no matter what you say. So. Or Please artists tell me why should people open up their checkbooks and help you and help the story? Um, we are artistpreneurs, and as as entrepreneurs, part of that gig is to fundraise, and um, and together we're stronger. And this is a universal story. This could be any eighteen year old on the planet that has won. Uh, you know, beauty contest. And um, it's about a mother and a daughter. It's about a family torn apart. And we all have that same thread. Um, it's a story of never giving up your dreams and family forgiveness. Um, so join us and make a difference in telling stories that really matter and that unite us and that really inspire the world to be a better place. I, I'll say this. I always go back to our first movie, the first time we showed it in Los Angeles at a screening, and the impact that we have on a lot of filmmakers in the possibility that you can green light your life. That the only person that can really truly stop you in doing something is you and your own limitations and your own sabotaging of your own character and that we are the example and proof that it can be done. We are also proof that together as a, a husband and wife um, can be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I will close this by saying, I told this to Jennifer, and I, I wanna say this, not because I need to look like the hero here, is that 
I truly began to understand love at a deeper level with Jennifer because my whole agenda now with her is that I give her a platform. I'm not fighting for my own platform here. I'm a man in a man's world. I am fighting for that. I want the best for her. And I can tell you this, and I can guarantee you this, because I've seen our, uh, our the cut of our movie. We're going to show the world who Jennifer Barron's is and what the life that she had created to be able to empower so many women out there that are so afraid to show who they are. <laughs> right? And this is that platform. And this is... I am here at service for her. Yeah. This ain't about me. Thanks, baby. And that's what why I think it's so it's so important. Um, the only we're all unstoppable. We're all unstoppable. Yes, spoken like a true man's man, a true king, a true king. God bless you, and a real producer as well. So. Mm -hmm producers recognizing producers and you guys are amazing i can't wait to see you go through the finish line we're all in this together yes. thank you so much for coming on my show and uh in closing it please do donate and if you enjoy this episode share it subscribe rate review buy my book not on well yeah you can buy it on kindle too but buy it through seed and spark yeah so that you can do some good and help these two get their movie made. Yes, thank you for my book. Yes. Now, the Heart of Show Business. Thank you, Mauricio and Jennifer, for being on this show. Ciao. Hasta la vista. Thank you, Alexia. Buenas noches y todo.